Communication is very important on submarines, and it can be communications through radio or signal flags, or in this case, signal flares. Now, submarines were equipped with signal flare ejectors. Fleet boats uh, like COD had two. We're starting here in the aft torpedo room to show you the aft signal flare ejector. Um, it's essentially a miniature torpedo tube. It's designed to send out either a smoke float or uh, some other countermeasures uh, from this position. Uh, but for communications purposes, let's talk about the smoke uh, float. The U.S. submarines, sadly, like many other combat elements, had to deal with friendly fire. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, one or more U.S. submarines were sunk uh, by friendly fire. And it was understandable that uh, in the zeal to attack and sink enemy submarines, that friendly submarines could come under attack. Having a way to send up a signal flare to the surface was a very effective means of communicating to the surface ship or aircraft, hey, we're on your side. So um, the two flare ejectors aboard the boat, again, this one here in the after room, and there's one in the forward port quarter of the control room on COD, um, they uh, uh, could do that to uh, save the boat's skin. Now, my understanding is that the signal flare ejector in the control room was most often used to fire the signal flares to tell friendly ships and aircraft, hey, we're on your side. Also, in a uh, uh, post-war uh, exercise scenario, if you were uh, attacking a friendly ship, uh, you would send up a green flare uh, to signal, we got you. Uh, and I got to believe that uh, the, the nature of uh, that flare ejector uh, um, in the uh, control room, uh, that was the one that was used for that type of signaling or communication purposes. Now, this one back here uh, kind of shoots out uh, uh, horizontally uh, through a blanked uh, uh, aperture on the uh, pressure hull. Um, this could send out a, uh, a smoke flare uh, to signal friendly aircraft. That was a two-part uh, uh, device. It had a surface floating smoke float that would fire uh, pyrotechnic uh, colored shells into the sky. And uh, in World War II, it, it got quite complex. They could be uh, multiple star shells in various colors, a uh, green, red, uh, or green, red, green, uh, to signal uh, various times uh, that, hey, we're an allied ship and we're not uh, an enemy ship trying to fool you. But also because this goes out uh, horizontally, uh, the one back here, this could be used to send out what we now call countermeasures. Um, and we have uh, one of those countermeasures uh, shipping sleeves. Uh, this one was acquired aboard the USS Trout, which was a, a post-war diesel attack boat. It's simply a three-inch plastic uh, uh, shipping uh, storage tube. It has a little bit of uh, print on it. says, remove before launch. And it's got a little rubber gasket. Uh, this was rolling around on the uh, Trout before it was uh, scrapped. We went aboard uh, to scavenge some parts, and I saw this. And so uh, I brought that back for our boat. Uh, in World War II, your countermeasures were called foxers, um, and they could be something as simple as a, a cylinder, a uh, cardboard cylinder full of what is essentially is Alka-Seltzer. Uh, when that uh, uh, solid cylinder uh, of chemical would hit the seawater, it would start effervescing, uh, creating a cloud of bubbles, which would act like a smoke screen on the surface. Uh, it would dampen enemy sonar pings. Uh, just the fact that it's making a, a, a hissing noise as it's effervescing uh, could be enough to uh, defeat uh, the enemy uh, listening for our, uh, our cavitation or machinery noises. Later in the war, when we discovered that the Japanese would uh, listen for the high-pitched whine of the fleet submarine's reduction gear, uh, we made a small um, torpedo that we could load into this and fire uh, while we rigged for ultra-quiet. Uh, it would make a very pronounced whine uh, as it went in the opposite direction we were traveling, uh, and hopefully that uh, would f fool the enemy to think that the submarine is over there uh, when we're going in that direction. Um, 
We're going to pause for a moment and we're going to meet up in the uh, control room where we can show you the other signal flare ejector. And here we are back in the control room. Uh, I'm in the forward port corner and this is the other signal flare ejector. It's got a different mechanism for operating um, and it's got a great legend here that frankly I never look at enough. Hold uh, signal flare ejector, hold firing lever in firing position for five seconds. So there you go, you got to hold that in the firing position for five seconds. Um, and here's the breach mechanism right here. Now, most fleet boats have a pyrotechnic locker somewhere in the control room. Uh, I've seen the one on Silver Sides. It's on their forward starboard corner. Uh, but we have some electrical equipment there. Uh, I'm not sure where our pyrotechnic locker would be for the uh, signal flares. I suspect it's down here in this open space below the fathometer. Uh, it may have been removed uh, for, uh, for uh, use on other ships. Uh, but anyway, so this is the second one. And in a moment, we're going to go topside, and I'll show you the, uh, the muzzle, uh, which is often overlooked. Uh, so this is firing uh, at a near vertical uh, uh, position. Uh, it might be about 9, uh, 85 uh, degrees to the vertical. Uh, so this is going to be the way you're going to send a signal flare, particularly from deep submergence, uh, that's going to pop to the surface and go up to the sky to say, uh, if it's a green flare, we got you, or uh, please stop attacking. Uh, so uh, we're going to secure here and we're going to meet you topside. Well, here we are up on deck uh, on the uh, port side of our conning tower. And this uh, innocuous looking uh, cylinder here in the deck boards is the muzzle for the uh, flare ejector that's located in the forward port quarter of our control room. Right there, it's, as I said, it's angled at a slight angle to, uh, to port. Uh, but that's where your, uh, your flare package is going to be exiting at a relatively high rate of speed to get to the surface. So uh, that's a little bit of hidden history on COD. Uh, again, uh, I'm Paul Ferrace, a director of the COD. And remember to uh, hit the like, uh, hit the subscribe button, and uh, we'll be uh, making more in the future. Thank you.